So every single day I get asked a ton of questions from you guys and I try to pick up some of the most frequently asked questions and put them into a video. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Some of those questions are people asking me, Willie, what is an inoculation loop? Do I need an inoculation loop? What's the proper way to use one? What are they used for? Can I get by without using one? And we're also gonna be talking about how all these mycologists out there that are on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all that, how they're getting perfectly cut circles for their agar transfers. A lot of you guys are really, really curious about that and I'm gonna show you how it's done the right way and I'm also gonna show you guys how to use an inoculation loop the right way so that way you guys can cut down your contamination rate as low as possible. This is gonna be a really good video. It's a new video and I wanna thank you guys for joining me. Let's go. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Trip Team? First of all, I'm so excited to be back now. I know you guys are probably saying, Willie, what the hell? You haven't dropped a video on YouTube in a couple months. And that's true. Most of the reason why I haven't dropped a video on YouTube in a couple months is because I've been dumping so much effort into my Patreon. Now, you guys know the content I covered. I need to keep it really dulled down here on YouTube, but I do still release all that really good content, but it's all over on Patreon. So we need to keep this to strictly mycology. I can't really get in depth with all the stuff that I do. So I'm always dropping brand new Patreon exclusive. Actually, some of the new Patreon exclusive videos that I just dropped are absolutely insane. Literally, I'm dropping two to three Patreon exclusives every single month of text. So if you guys wanna check that out, plus a lot more like a private Reddit, a private chat room, private one-on-one -on -one assistance from me, things like that, you know, trip team merchandise and stickers and all that good stuff. So if you guys wanna check all that out, make sure you go check out my Patreon. I'm telling you, Everybody that goes over there and becomes a Patreon supporter absolutely loves it and all the amazing benefits you get besides the videos. So make sure you guys check it out. As always, social media is right there. If you guys want to check that out, feel free. I'm always doing giveaways and all types of really cool stuff, so make sure you guys go check it out. So today, we're going to be working in front of the flow hood. A lot of you guys have been asking me a bunch of different questions when it comes to agar transfers. Some of you guys are saying, Willie, what's an inoculation loop used for? And Willie, how do people get those perfect circular cuts for their agar transfers? So I'm going to be showing you guys both of those today. I'm going to be showing you the proper way to use an inoculation loop and what we use it for. And I'm also going to show you how to get them perfect circular cuts for your agar dishes. Now the cool thing about perfect circular cuts is you're gonna get nice even growth because it's symmetrical. So if the growth is over the circle, it should grow down nice and even and you guys should get nice even symmetrical growth. Now with an inoculation loop, you guys can make your agar, your you know tissue samples, your LCs, you can stretch them out because an inoculation loop takes a very fine sample of the tissue and transfers it to the new medium. So if you guys have a one gallon LC or a one quart LC with an inoculation loop, you could inoculate many, many agar dishes and other things. So I'm gonna be showing you guys both of those methods. So first we need to jump in front of the flow hood. Now you guys should know how to use your flow hood by now if you guys are watching this video. If not, go back on some of my further videos. I talk about sterile tech and prepping your workspace so that way you guys can keep your contaminations as low as humanly possible. As always, before you get into your lab and you start working in sterile conditions, you guys are gonna wanna shower, you guys are gonna wanna clean yourself up really good. Make sure you guys have clean fingernails, that you wipe down your area really good and you turn on your flow hood at least 15 to 20 minutes before you actually start working in front of it. You wanna let that air start going and get going before you guys actually start working in front of it. Now, everything you bring into that space, you wanna wipe down with isopropyl alcohol. So so your petri dishes, you want, you know, your supplies that you're going to be using, anything that's going to go into that sterile area, you guys want to make sure you wipe it down before you actually put it in that area. 
There's no sense in cleaning the area and getting it sterile and then bringing stuff in that isn't sterile. So you guys wanna clean off all the dust and debris that might be on top of anything. With that said, let's jump in front of the flow hood and I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna be working with. All right guys, so hopefully you guys could hear me over the flow hood. Now you guys know you have to use a flow hood so we're gonna try to do the best we could do but the audio should be pretty good. Um, in case it's a little messed up, we'll try to clean it up the best we can. So as you guys could see in front of me, we got our flow hood, we got our rack so that we're working center mass to our flow hood. And you could also see we have a few other things in front of us. Now some things that you guys can't see that are off on top of my flow hood are things like parafilm, some alcohol wipes, the inoculation loop, um, my clean burning alcohol lamp, so I could flame sterilize. We also have some isopropyl alcohol and a few other things that we're gonna need to work and do agar transfers and things like that. So make sure you guys have everything all set up, everything's all wiped down and ready to go. Now you guys will also see that I have a test tube or a culture tube right here with the rack. Now the reason why I have that culture tube is because we're gonna fill it up with alcohol because that's what we're gonna dip our inoculation loop into. We need to make sure we're dipping it into isopropyl alcohol so that we kill off anything that might be on there. Now when you guys get disposable inoculation loops, they'll actually come in a sterile package just like this right here. Let's get this all focused in. And this is what it will look like. Now this is a sterile inoculation loop. Now there's different sizes and even though they come sterile, we still want to use isopropyl alcohol just to make sure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to be taking our circular cuts and we're going to be making new transfers. So a lot of you guys have been asking me, Willie, how are all these mycologists getting circular cuts? And the answer is really simple. They're just using a straw. They're using a straw or they're using a hole punch, one or the other. Either way, you're gonna get the same exact results. So what we're gonna be using in this video, just cause it's extremely accessible, you guys could go to Target, Walmart, really anywhere and purchase one of these, is a metal straw. So this is a reusable metal straw. It's metal because we wanna be able to flame sterilize it. So this is exactly what it looks like. Now this is a dash straw and it's a magnetic straw and when we open it up you guys will see it has individual pieces plus a cleaning brush you guys are going to want all of this so i'm going to just pull this out real quick because this is the piece we're going to use we're only going to use one piece and i'm also going to pull out the cleaning brush and i'm just going to close that up and put it off to the side it has a perfect circle and this is completely, completely see-through, through and through. And you guys are gonna want that because you have to push the agar piece out onto the new plate. So you guys are gonna want some way to push it out. So that's where this telescopic brush comes in handy because what we do is we could telescopically make it larger. And then what you guys would do is after you make your cut, you guys would stick the thing in there and then it comes out the bottom. You guys would push and get your agar piece out, just like that, and drop it onto the new plate. And that's why you need both pieces. Now, if you guys have a hole punch, you guys really don't need this, but getting a reusable metal straw is really, really cheap, and you guys could pretty much get it at any store. So let's get everything ready so I could show you guys exactly how we need to get this all set up to start making our agar transfers. Now I have an agar plate right here. This is an agar plate I actually forgot about. It's been sitting for a while. It even has some fruits popping up, but still, even if there's pins, there's fruits popping up, you guys could still use these to make transfers. And that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be transferring this over to some new plates. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I got some isopropyl wipes and I'm just gonna wipe down my straw really, really well. We're still gonna flame sterilize. You just wanna try to get it as clean as possible. Okay, once you guys do that, just set it down 
and you guys want to do the same thing with the telescopic brush or whatever you're going to be using to push your agar out you guys just want to make sure you get it nice and clean and then we're going to put that off to the side now of course make sure you guys are using hand sanitizer on top of your gloves and that you guys have disinfected your area and that your flow hood has been running for about 15 to 20 minutes before you guys get in front of it and that you're working center mass of your flow hood so you want to try to be working in the middle as close to the middle as possible because that's going to be the most cleanest air that's where you're going to get the best laminar flow from all right guys i just wanted to get you guys a little bit closer and i had to shut it off autofocus because it kept going in and out of focus and i don't want it to go in and out of focus when we're doing this right here so pretty much what you guys want to do is if you have any parafilm around your agar dish you guys want to remove it and then you want to wipe your agar dish down with isopropyl alcohol around the edges because when you open this up you don't want anything to fall into the plate or into the new plate now you guys might be able to see this you might not be able to see this but this is my clean burning alcohol lamp and what i'm going to be doing is lighting this and then I'm gonna be flame sterilizing both my straw end and the brush or the telescopic piece that I'm gonna be using to push out my agar transfers. Okay, you guys are gonna to wanna to make sure it's nice and hot and then you're just gonna put it off to the side. And then what you guys wanna do is you wanna do the same exact thing with the telescopic piece, just like that right here. Now I'm gonna set that off to the side. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that cool for a second and then we're gonna start making our cuts when we go to make our cuts if it's still a little warm it's perfectly fine once it touches the agar it will cool almost immediately make sure you guys have all your agar dishes that are clean ready to be transferred to all set up and ready to go as well so what I like to do is already have my telescopic piece inside the straw and now what I'll do is I'll take my first plate that I'm going to make a transfer to. And then I'm going to start making my cuts. So pretty much you just go, you push down, just like that. You lift up, put that off to the side. Now you take your new dish, you can remove the cover. And you guys are just going to go. And drop it right there as you guys can see we just dropped it right there as you guys can see that's our first transfer a perfect circle and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this one off to the side we'll parafilm everything up after we do all of our transfers now same thing you guys are gonna want to flame sterilize again you don't need to wipe it down with isopropyl you only need to do that initially now you're just gonna flame sterilize now once you guys have flame sterilized, same exact thing, my telescopic piece is in there. I'm going to remove this. Took my next cut, put it off to the side, and now the same exact thing. We're just going to go, boom, right there. And as you guys can see, that's our next cut. And we're going to put this off to the side and we're going to do one more. All right. Same thing. Right there. Just like that. Now what we're going to do is I'm just going to put this off to the side and we're going to do some inoculation loop work and then I'll come back later and I'll finish cutting all these transfers. Now I'll go all the way around, I'll get as many transfers as I can from the newest growth. So I always want to work from the growth that's the newest. So that's going to be the growth that's closest to the edge of the dish. Now if this was a monoculture, then you guys could pretty much work your way all the way to the center because it's one genetic. But what I'm doing here because this is a multi-spore plate, I'm working my way around and I'm getting different cuts from different genetic sectors. All right guys, new gloves, new hand sanitizer. You guys wanna make sure that your area is clean. I got all the stuff that we was just working with out of the way. 
and now we're going to be doing some inoculation loop work so as you guys know we already have the inoculation loop i got my clean agar dishes that i'm going to be making my transfers to and right here you guys might be able to see this let's get you guys a little bit closer this right here is some enigma this is some enigma culture that i want to transfer to these new agar plates so we're going to be using an inoculation loop to make those transfers to the new agar plate so the first thing i want to do is i want to get my new plate all set up and then i want to take some isopropyl alcohol and i want to fill up my culture tube now you guys remember i had my culture tube and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put some isopropyl in there just about that much you don't need much just to get the tip of the inoculation loop and then what you guys want to do is you want to open up your inoculation loop once you guys have your inoculation loop out of the sterile packaging now you guys could just place it in the tube like that with the head of the loop into the alcohol just like that now once you guys get it inside just move it around a little bit and now what we're going to do is we're just going to let it sit in front of our flow hood just to let that isopropyl evaporate for a couple seconds now once that alcohol completely evaporates now what we want to do is we want to take our culture whether it's a liquid culture or a culture like this one right here that's inside of this little test tube you guys want to open it up you guys want to open up your agar plate just put the cover off to the side take your inoculation loop you guys want to work it around in there just move it around get it dug in there you want to scrape a little bit of that culture and you guys want to apply it to the new agar dish close up your little test tube close up your agar plate and now move on to the next plate same thing you want to take your loop drop it back into the alcohol just like that once it's evaporated remove your lid to your agar dish open up your vial same exact thing you guys want to get a piece of tissue on there just like that and you guys want to place it to the new agar dish you guys are just going to scrape with your loop just like that and then what you guys want to do is place your cover back on just like that now I'm gonna do another plate for you guys so I'm gonna put this in the alcohol get it moving around let it evaporate and then we're gonna go and inoculate this dish alright so that evaporated we're gonna remove our lid place it off to the side take our vial same thing we just want to take a little bit of the culture and you guys want to scrape your dish just like that once you guys do that now you guys can cover it back up and now it's all set now you guys could parafilm and label your agar dishes now just for fun I'm going to be inoculating some TW2 liquid culture for you guys. And you guys might not be able to see it, but this is a liquid culture inside this vial right here. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it with the liquid culture as well. Now inside here was a culture. So this was a culture slant with some live Enigma tissue on that culture. And that's what we just inoculated with right there. But now we're going to be inoculating with some liquid culture just so you guys can see how it's done both ways. Now, first things first, you guys are going to want to be using a new inoculation loop. If you guys have a reusable inoculation loop, you guys want to flame sterilize and you guys want to make sure that the previous culture is cleaned off of it. We're using a new inoculation loop, but if you guys did have a reusable metal loop, then you guys are going to want to make sure you're wiping down with isopropyl that you're flame sterilizing before you actually introduce it into your alcohol. So first things first, let's pull out our inoculation loop and we're going to let it air evaporate. Now, once it air evaporates, what you guys want to do is crack open the lid to your liquid culture. And I'll get you guys a good shot of what this liquid culture looks like. Let's try to get you guys zoomed in. 
as you guys can see the tissue sample is down there suspended in our liquid culture so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna inoculate some plates with our liquid culture so the first thing you want to do is remove your lid place it off to the side same thing you want to go in there with the uh, loop you want to get that liquid culture nice and broken up and then you guys want to come and you guys want to make a squiggle just like that and then place it off to the side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in there again and then I'm gonna remove my cover I'm gonna get some of that culture I'm just gonna drizzle it on there you guys want to make sure you get it good scrape it good now what you guys want to do is just put it off to the side same exact thing I'm gonna go in there again remove your cover and just squiggle it along there and put it off to the side just like that now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my liquid culture I'm gonna replace the cap and this is gonna go back into storage and there you go guys that's pretty much how you guys do both of those methods that's how you use an inoculation loop and that's how you make perfect circular cuts to transfer to new agar dishes it's extremely extremely easy to use both of these methods these are two different ways of inoculation and you guys could do what you want so I got some of these dishes with the perfect circular cuts right here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put some parafilm around it real quick so you guys could see I know I've shown you that in other videos but I want to show the people that might be seeing this video for the first time how to do it so pretty much I have my parafilm I'm gonna remove the backing I'm gonna take my parafilm I'm going to go around the edge of my dish, just stretching it the entire way, all the way around. Just like that. So if you guys have labels, now you can put your label on there. Since I know exactly what this is, I'm going to label it. It's a Cuba Camagüey MS and my inventory number is 00137-8. So I actually have an Excel spreadsheet that I keep all my samples and they're all labeled by number. These numbers mean something, so when I plug them into my Excel sheet, I can actually recover all the history of this genetic right here. Now, everybody won't be that advanced, so if you guys don't have a system like that, the most important thing you could do is what type of mushroom is it? Say it's a Psilocybe cubensis, it's a Cuba Camagüe, date of inoculation, is it multi-spore, what transfer, what generation, things like that. Pretty much you wanna to try to include as much information as you can. This number that I have right here has all that information. What generation, it has pictures of the donor fruit, things like that. So I don't need to worry about writing all that, but pretty much Cuba Camagüe, it's a multi-spore. And then this is my inventory number, 00137-8. Hopefully this was super helpful to all you mycologists out there wondering how to use an inoculation loop and how to get perfect circular agar cuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up these agar plates and I'll catch up with you guys in a second. And there you go, guys. That's the questions that you guys have been asking. Now, I love hearing from you guys. So if you guys want to see any video, you have guys have any questions, then drop it down below in the comments. I might not get to respond to every comment. I might not get to read every single comment. But for the first few days, I do try to go through the comments and get some feedback from you guys because you guys are what really matters. You guys are what dictates future videos and how we do things. You know, sometimes I throw things out there, see how you guys react to it. You guys let me know we like it, we don't like it, and we make changes from there. So if you guys want to see anything specific or you guys have any questions, drop them down below because you might see it in a future video. Like I said, Patreon is the spot to go. That's where you're going to be able to contact me. That's where you're going to be able to get step-by-step -step extractions and text and synthesis. That's where you want to go because that's where all the new videos are going that we can't release anywhere else. So make sure you guys go check it out. There'll be a pinned comment down below. If you guys want to just click the link, you guys will be taken over there. Once you guys become a member, 
you guys could get access to all those videos instantly, including the private Reddit and things like that. So make sure you guys go check it out. Now here's something that I wanna get from you guys. So I'm working on a really big project and I want some input from you guys. So I'm looking for you guys out there that have had amazing psychedelic breakthroughs. If you've had a psychedelic breakthrough that has completely changed your life, that was just absolutely amazing, and you wanna be part of a really big project I'm working on, then make sure you guys go down below to the pinned comment. There's gonna be an email there Write a brief description about your breakthrough and one of my people will reach out to you. We're working on a project that's going to completely change the way the regular world looks at psychedelics and breakthroughs. It's absolutely amazing and you could be part of it. Now, this has to be full on breakthroughs where your consciousness separated from your body. We're not looking for just a psychedelic experience or microdosing experience that have changed our lives, even though that's really important. We're trying to go a little bit deeper. We're talking about full breakthroughs where you separated your conscious from your body and you want to tell that story to help a ton of other people all around the world. That's what we're looking for. So I hope to talk to you guys soon that want to be involved in that. With that said, I want to thank every single one of you guys for all your love and support. Without you guys, none of this would be possible. And I really mean that. Your love, your support, your encouragement, just your representation of the TTF is what this is all about. I couldn't have gotten as far as I have in these past couple years without you guys. And it really makes me want to cry because you guys really are my family. I love you guys more than life itself. With that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be dropping new videos every single week. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. Make sure you guys subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.